I've never really liked spiders. And since I've declared my disdain for them, I bet that most people watching this video feel about the same way. They fall into the tick and snake category of things we really don't want to be around. But in this episode of August Outdoors, I'll take a road trip to Fantasy Swamp to learn more about these eight-legged creatures and overcome some of the fear and fable that goes with them as we search for spiders. Hi, I'm Kathy, Dr. Kathy Tugman. Um, I'm employed by Georgia Regents University for the Department of Biological Sciences. And my hobby and my research are spiders. I love them, they're great. So we're, uh, we're out here today at the Lock and Dam Park that's near the airport in Fennessey Swamp. And uh, we came here because of the extreme diversity of spiders that are found here. There are beautiful orb weavers, there are beautiful uh, ground dwellers and things like that. And so today we've kind of walked around here in Fennessey and uh, we've seen the orb, the uh, riding spider, uh, genus Argiope, species Orentia. And um, it's called a riding spider because in its web it has a little stable momentum, a zigzag, if you will, that goes down the center of the web, so it, it seems to be riding. Uh, it is not threatening to humans. It will do everything to avoid humans. It's an excellent insect catcher. So if you have them in your yard, you need to leave them alone because they'll catch at least 10 times their body weight in insects. Uh, they're great for the environment. She really is the spider that Charlotte's Web was written about. Uh, I know if you saw Hollywood's version, they used a different spider. But because of that stable momentum in the web, uh, somebody said she was riding. And if, you, if you've seen Charlotte's Web, you remember that she writes a message to Wilbur the pig in that story. And so that, that's who that spider was written about. But that spider has a very interesting defensive mechanism. If you disturb her, if something too large for her to consume hits her web, she will begin to rock her abdomen back and forth and she can get the web bouncing at a relatively rapid rate and keep it up for a rather long time. The idea being that she'll bounce out any large potential predator in the web that might eat her and get it knocked out of the web and scare away anything else that might be in the area. We've also seen here at the Lock and Dam, we've seen a spider that's relatively new to this area. It's a tropical spider predominantly. Uh, seems to be coming into this area called uh, Nephila calippis is this genus and species. Common name, golden orb web spider. And it gets that name because it, its web is yellow. It has a yellow pigment in the web. So when it's, the sunlight hits it, the orb web appears golden. It too is a, a, a great insect catcher, grasshoppers and flying insects, uh, it keeps the environment free. We've also seen jumping spiders. They are uh, hunters. They don't really weave a web. Uh, they do have the ability to make silk. They make a, a sleeping place that we call a hibernaculum, but they're out hunting. So they're always on the prowl looking for small insects to consume. And they're called jumping spiders because one of the ways they capture the insect is to jump on it. We've seen um, a spider that un unfortunately gets mistaken for the brown recluse. And um, it is a male of a spider that's called Philostatidae. Doesn't really have a common name other than a sheet web spider. Looks similar in color pattern to the brown recluse, but without the fiddle back on it, without the fiddle on its back. And it is not, uh, while it is venomous, it's not dangerous to us. Uh, we've also looked at um, a, a web of a bowl and doily spider, called that because it has a bowl-shaped web, and then across the top it has a flat web called a doily, and they are great insect catchers. They are very common. You probably have some of those in your yard. Again, great for the insect population, small insects, just things like mosquitoes and other things, gnats that you might want to get rid of. As a person who loves spiders and has researched them for close to 30 years now, um, and I've handled them. I'll hold them in my hand. I've never been bitten, ever because spiders, they don't want to bite us. Um, their venom is precious. Uh, they use it for their prey. And they really have gotten a bad rap. They get accused of all kinds of, of uh, sores and things that more than likely uh, actually are caused by bacteria. Uh, people are always saying they have spider bites when either it's an insect bite or it's something they've scratched. Spiders, on the other hand, are great contributors to the environment. Uh, they, they control the insect population. They, um, they provide beauty because if you go out on a glistening morning, their webs are absolutely gorgeous. They, are, uh, they will do everything in their power to stay away from you, to stay off of you. They don't like being on us any more than we want them being on us. So my 
you know, my desire in life is that we would get over this idea, even if you're fearful of them, uh, just leave them alone, stay away from them, allow them to do the job that they're doing for you, which is eating a bunch of insects like mosquitoes and gnats that, that bother you. Um, in Mexico, actually, they've learned to do this very well. In Mexico, there is a colonial spider, so it builds huge webs that can fill several trees. And they will go out and cut a branch that has this web and several spiders on it, because these spiders live together. They're one of the few spiders that can live together. They will take that into their house and they will use that as pest control. And it works really well. It's better than any of these fly strips you can get or any of these pesticides and it's non-harmful. So I think we would be all well if we would just um, allow spiders to live. If they're in your house, you can safely capture them in a large jar and take them outside. Uh, there's uh, something called a wolf spider that wanders in and, and it's big, uh, but a lot of people make their life worse because when mom comes in, she has a bunch of babies on her back. And if you, if you stomp on that spider, those hundreds of babies are now gonna be in your house growing into big adults. So if you would just capture her, all her little children will go with her outside. And so I, I have a relocation policy and, um, and to be honest, people call me and I'll come and move them if they're bugging you. And I'll put them in a place where, where they can do their job and where they can be uh, part of the ecosystem. And um, you know, they're actually looking into them as possibly identif uh, ident identifiers of uh, dangerous environments where we might need bioremediation because they're often impacted if insects have lots of pesticides on them.